Hey guys, Lisa here from the Huffman House. I just wanted to uh, shoot you a quick video and let you know what um, something I'm planning on working on um, to show you guys. So, for Valentine's Day, Mike was sweet enough to get me this complete permish, ferment, ferment, fermentation kit. Um, I believe he got it from Hoss Tools and I'm sure he can link it to you below. It's something I have uh, been looking into wanting to do and looking at, you know, the health benefits and that type of stuff. So, so in this little kit, oh, let's see if I can get it open. There we go. It came with a fermenting guide and a small little recipe book. And um, then it has, well, there we go. Came with the little rubber burpee tops, the little glass weight. And I know these are not the technical terms, but hey, I'm new to it, and this is what I call them. So, it's a little smushy smush. All right. So, it came with that, and uh, I will definitely be starting to work on it, and I will definitely bring... So, I will uh, definitely be bringing you along on my new adventure of uh, fermenting, and uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Could be good. Could be something that you learn not to do, <laughs> y'all. All right, y'all. Y'all be safe. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Lisa. So, this is going to be my first time uh, fermenting something. And I'm using my little book that came with my kit. And uh, I'm going to try to make my first little jar. Well, actually, I'm going to do two. I'll explain that. Um, of sauerkraut. So, first thing... Um, so explaining about the reason why I have two pint jars is because, um, I'm not a very peppery or spicy type of person. So I'm going to make one just plain, um, one pint just plain. And then the other pint, I'm going to go ahead and add some black peppercorns and some red pepper flakes. Cause, uh, my mom and, uh, and Mike really like spicy stuff. So, so that's the reason behind I'm doing two instead of just the one. So I already shredded my cabbage um we did have an incident already just during that part i managed to break our <laughs> food processor shredding uh, leave it to me so so i got my cabbage all shredded up in here and uh for this amount it says it's going to take one tablespoon of salt I'm gonna get that and then I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle it in and then I'm gonna kind of toss it up a little bit or mix it up I guess you could say and then uh, add a little more salt mix it up and add some more all right so it says let's see what it says to do next because again i'm just learning this i am doing this live first time ever so we'll see how it goes <laughs> after you do that it says with your hands or a large spoon toss the cabbage well and then squeeze and massage the cabbage to work the salt in so we're gonna do that trying to make sure i get it all the way to the bottom here and again, this was uh, one head of cabbage and one tablespoon of salt. Now, according to what I have read, you don't use table spot, do, table spot, table salt. You want to use something that has no, um, no, nothing added to it, like uh, stuff for it not to cake up or anything like that. It, you want it to be pure salt. From what I understand, you can use pickling salt, you can use co coarse kosher salt, um, and I have actually heard that people sometimes use that pink Himalayan, um, which is what I use on a daily basis, but this time, just for this, I went ahead and did the um, all natural canning and pickling salt, so. All right, so, got all this massaged in. I'm going to clean off my hands a little bit 
and go get my smisher thingy. I believe it's called a, I don't know. I call it a smasher, smash, I don't know. Let me go grab that real quick. And it came with this uh, complete kit uh, right here. So this is what it looks like. There's a smaller side and a bigger side. Um, so and then it says just to, let's see, continue breaking it down. Let's see. Use the pickle packer. That's what it's called. It's called a pickle packer. All right, here we go. Use the pickle packer to pound the cabbage and begin breaking down all the cell walls to release the juice. Pound it flat, toss, pound again. All right, well, let's pound it down. Get you a good look at it there. Again, I'm just kind of pounding it down. Continue pounding and mixing until it's wilted and juicy. It can take several minutes. So once I do this for a while, I'll just bring you back, all right? All right, I'm back. And this is what we have now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it set. Uh, let's see. It says about a couple hours, so. All right, we'll see you back in about two to three hours. So it's been about a little over two hours. I'm gonna uncover it and see what we have. So this is what it's looking like. It definitely smells like cabbage in here. So now we're going to fill our jars up. Let's see, let me get a spoon. There we go, okay. I'm just gonna kind of divide it, divide it up between both jars. This one over here, I'm just gonna add a few peppercorns. And just a tad bit of red pepper flake. All right. Just keep adding the cabbage in. Use our little smasher upper here. Just kind of smash it down and you can see the, the fluids there coming up. And that's all natural from the cabbage. What you're hoping to do is have enough that it'll cover the cabbage and you don't have to add any added uh, fluids to it. So, and of course the more that you're doing it, or I'm sorry, the longer that it's sitting, they said that it will definitely have more fluids coming out of it, so. All new to me. All new to me. All right, and they say don't fill it all the way to the tippity top because of the fact that, um, again, there's gonna be more fluids uh, coming out of it. That was all of that. Give it a good smash down again. Make sure that the fluid is uh, 
coming over the top. And it is, so this is gonna be great. All right, now they said to take a leaf of your cabbage, which I did um, when I shredded it. So take a whole leaf of your cabbage, cut it out the size of, of your jar. And then you're gonna take that and you're gonna lay that on top there. And the reason being behind that, they say, is so that it helps any, um, to make sure none of the vegetables come up above the brine. That's the whole trick to this, is you wanna keep everything down below that brine. I'll stick that down like that, make sure my juices are over it. Let's see if you can maybe get a good look at that, how the juice is over it. All right, so next we're going to add our glass disc here. I think they call that a, uh, what do they call that? Let's see. Uh, the pickle packer, no, yes. Pickle packer. Okay. Oops, let's wipe this one down real good. that in there again make sure making sure that 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 juice is above everything okay then we're gonna add our little mason top burpers here put that on Ooh, maybe get that on like that make sure it's on good do it also to this one. Okay, so look guys, I did it in my first time fermenting. Started with the easy stuff. So I'll be keeping you up to date, um, adding to this video uh, so you can, you know, see it from beginning to end all at one time. So, all right, we'll see y'all in a little bit. Hey everybody, I'm back. It's been about seven days or so. I have the cabbage that we fermented. Um, I'll get to that a little bit later in the video. So today I plan on doing a mixed, um, mixed vegetable type ferment. So I've got cauliflower, I've got the green beans, I've got tomatoes, and carrots. So I'm gonna put those all into a quart jar to, um, to ferment. The recipe comes from the book that I got with the mason tops kit that my husband got me. And so this is where I got that recipe from. So for a quart, what we're gonna do is calls for a bay leaf in the bottom and then I did like two cloves of garlic. I'm gonna cut them and just that went into the bottom of this. Now today's fermenting is gonna be a little bit different than what we did with the cabbage where we just uh, dry salted it. This time we're actually gonna be uh, using a brine for it that I already got ready. So what I did was I put for one quart of fluid of water it called for four teaspoons of salt, non-refined again. Uh, so I heated up some water um, in order to help dissolve the salt and then filled it up and I made sure I stirred it real well. So I'm gonna set that aside. And so what we're gonna do is we're just going to start uh, layering or however you wanna put them in here, um, the vegetables. Now with tomatoes, you want to use like a skewer or a toothpick or something and kind of drive a hole through them. And that's just so the brine can get inside of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some of these in. And again, these are not my tomatoes because it's not tomato season. Um, so I bought these just so I could start learning how to ferment before So we can start learning to ferment before we have our uh, 
own veggies to do this year. Maybe I can get it down to a pretty good amount and ignore, ignore the dog in the background. <laughs> Lily. Oh, I gotta love it. So I put a few tomatoes. I'm gonna put some whoop, cauliflower down in there. Okay. So I didn't have any carrots again. We don't have any fresh carrots, so I'm just using the little baby carrots that you get at the store. So some carrots, some green beans. I'm just gonna tuck those on the side there. Well, maybe shake them in there. There we go. So we're just gonna keep layering that as we go. I'm gonna put some more cauliflower. In there. I'm gonna push it down a little bit. Alright, so here we go. That's our little garden ferment. And you can add whatever type of um, vegetables that you think you would like. Um, there's no wrong way. So now what we're gonna do is, I'm pretty messy, so I'm gonna put this on top here. And we're just gonna fill it up with the brine. All right. Now we still have to put our pickle puck weight on it, so. I'm just gonna kind of push that down a little bit more. We're gonna put our weight on there. There we go. And make sure that the fluid is coming up over the weight. Then we're gonna take our little burping cap that we got with the mason top kit. And uh, all right. I'm gonna set it in a cool, dry, uh, dark, dark spot and let it ferment. Um, hopefully, you know, five to seven days again. That looks like it's a little off, so I just wanna check it. There we go. And I also forgot to wipe my rim anyway, so we'll do that now. And the main thing is, from what I understand, is just making sure that everything stays down below um, the liquid. All right, that one's done. How beautiful is that? Isn't that beautiful? All right. So I told you at the beginning, or not the beginning, but when we came back, um, that our ferment that we started at the beginning of this video. It's been about seven days or so. So I'm gonna call Mike in here and we're just gonna give it a taste test and see if it still needs to ferment a little bit longer or not. Hey Mike, you wanna come in here and try this? Yeah. All right. You want me to look? So we're gonna smell. Mm. Smells like sauerkraut. We take our little leaf that we had put on the top off of it. I'm gonna let you taste first. <laughs> <laughs> Guinea pig, right? <laughs> oh, ah. Short people here. Twangy. You think mm -hmm. it needs to ferment a little bit longer? Mm -hmm. I like it. Definitely needed just a salt. A little salty, yeah. Yeah. But the, I don't know what's the word, effervescence, the, tangy. the twang, tang, yeah, that's awesome. You think Very it's, good. Think it's ready to eat? I think so. All right. 
You heard it here, folks. Mike gives it a thumbs up. <laughs> All right, thanks again for joining us, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Remember, grow something no matter how small. Thanks.